Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by telling you a dream that I had last night and then in, in, interpreting it for you uh, to make a couple of points and then we'll talk about some other things in relationship to it because this is the second lesson and of course next week, uh, I'm not sure, we may go to a third night site uh, class. You know, I don't want to stop on it because it's it's captivating me as extremely important and it's really the, what I believe is that dreams are God's primary way of communicating. They've always been and they always will be. And so therefore they are actually the hub of our revelation or our connection to God and our communication with him. Um, now, of course, religion and society and everything has really mucked it up. And we've gotten way away from it. It used to be a very, very common. People understood dreams right away because they were just really used to, to and versed at it. But uh, so, so we get over that. We we learn, you know, how to interpret his very personal <coughs> dream language because his dream language is very personal. There are universal symbolisms can, that can be helpful, but when he's talking to you, he's not talking to the world. When he's having a relationship with you, he's not having a relationship with the world. He's having a relationship with you in a very unique way. Therefore, his language and the way he see, communicates with you will have overall what we'll call guidelines that it fits in, but it's also going to be very, very unique. So there are certain things that he will, will communicate his heart to me in a symbol or a metaphor that will be totally different than that symbol or metaphor would mean to you because it will all depend upon that very simple factor of the setting of our life at that time, the center of our thoughts, the center of what we're doing, the center of, of what is motivating us, the center of our concerns, uh, what our life specifically is about. God's communication with us is going to be very unique Others can help us interpret our dreams, and especially as we're learning, it's a, not a bad thing to get other people's help and input if they ask you the right questions. But it takes the, you, you just, unless the Holy Spirit has a special revelation that would particularly be for an unbeliever that you want to communicate. They're, they don't claim belief in Jesus or uh, God, and uh, but they have a dream and you're friends with them and they are asking you what the dream means, you can still ask them some of these key questions. But there are times when he will simply give you a revelation of what he's telling them to. But mostly, we need to learn how to interpret our own dreams and what God and know what God is saying to us personally, because it's very unique. His relationship with us is very personal and very unique. And so at any rate, uh, a dream that I had last night, of course, the setting right now uh, will come into play and I'll explain how. But the dream itself is I saw there was, uh, I was in a situation. I was in a meeting of some kind. I don't remember the details on that. But all of a sudden the power went out. And then the next thing I knew uh, we heard that their, the power station where there was their towers, electric towers that uh, people climb up there. You could, they're also like TV towers and things like that. So those, those power grids, those power towers, there were three of them and one of them had fallen over. And that was the reason that uh, we were a few miles away were without power. And one other thing that I do remember thinking about at the time was that it had been a, a terrorist. It had been a terrorist activity. That wasn't a major thought, but it was something that occurred to me at the time. Then I woke up. So first of all, uh, okay, why? So let me tell you what the setting of what would be my concerns, what I've been thinking about, what's been a, a factor in my life that's been more the top of the mind right now. Two things. Number one 
it's been, I'm authoring books, you know, and I have been really working hard and learning and getting the first one up. And now I'm just publishing a paperback of the same thing that I just already have up digitally. And it's a, extremely more complicated, but it's made up of several elements. And I'll get back to that. But another thing in my setting is I have been concerned about my health. Just different things going on in my body. Now, let me tell you what the first thing that happens with a lot of people when they interpret dreams is they, unfortunately, because of our sin consciousness, we always think God is after correcting us. And because the Holy Spirit, now hear this, listeners, hear this, this is really important. It says very clearly in the scriptures that the Holy Spirit is an encourager and he is the prime interpreter of dreams and prime interpreter of revelation. And it's our culture that has become very sin and lack conscious that we just assume that God is going to be honest about something and warning us about how bad we are in this area or that area or how we're missing it here or there or whatever. And so the first thing I thought of, the number three, three stuck out. So I thought of the Trinity. Okay, so what has fallen over? Uh, I, oh, shoot. I can't think of anything because I've really been pursuing God. And I've really been pursuing uh, the, the life and power of the Holy Spirit. I've been pursuing a relationship with the Father and the Son. That didn't fit. And so my natural assumption would be, well, you don't want it to fit. Because you're going to be sin conscious and you're going to be figuring out where you're a slug. <laughs> and that's what he wants to talk to you about. <laughs> But I know better than that because I've taught better than that. And so, but it was the first thing that crossed my mind. And then I thought, well, what else? Okay, let's superimpose this over the action of the dream. Remember, it's three parts. To simplify our dreams, setting of our lives, action in the dream, and emotion in the dreams that can be superimposed over the setting of our lives. And that sets us right into the primary meeting. And it really, really uncomplicates it. So, what has been going on as far as my setting is concerned? Well, my health and issues that I've just been afraid I'm deteriorating. I mean, at core, okay, I'm 72. Of course, I'm getting older, okay. But it's just been a bother. It's just been bothering me. You know, how... I. It just naturally would bother you, okay? And so it has been a thing that has been part of my consciousness is what my health is like in, in some certain things in my body. And uh, you know what the Lord was telling me? I am body, soul, and spirit. My spirit and, and soul connection are healthy. My body isn't, and I need to take better care of my body because I'm lacking energy because I'm not taking care of my body. And he was encouraging me that I would have more energy for ministry and for life in general if I would take care of my body because I've fallen away from that. Okay? Now, as I mentioned last week, there can be more than one interpretation because you have, may have more than one thing going on in your life that are not really necessarily similar. Well, this one did. And uh, the second part is that a book, as you're dealing with the paperback books, are made of three parts that they examine. The cover, the interior, your description. And when I woke up this morning, I opened up my email and they had rejected my cover. And the other two things have been accepted. And so, and, and I've corrected it now, and they're reviewing it again. And it wasn't a huge fix. But so there was an application there in a sense that my spirit already knew that was coming about. Because, you know, your spirit is eternal. And it's timeless. And your spirit reaches into the future and into the past and, in, and around the present. So it knows everything that's going on. So I believe the primary interpretation that was important to me on that was the fact that I need to take care, better care of my body. And I need to get back with it. 
and uh, I had been doing really well a year ago, and I had lost, actually, I've gained back 15 pounds, blah, 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 okay. My, of course, I'm sure that, that Karen is going to be happy with it because I know that she's been concerned about the whole thing too, you know, as far as the way it's affecting things with me on that. Now, here's another interesting thing with dreams. And this is why they are so wonderful because God in his communication with us brings grace with the dream. When he tells me about, I need to take better care of my body, he brings with it grace to take better, better care of my body. Because he's an encourager. He's a gift giver. He will do everything on his side of it. I had fallen out, fallen out of personal discipline is basically what happened. And I kept thinking, well, you know, I'll, I, I'll, get, I'll get to it. But, you know, this morning, and I believe this will last, this morning, I've just not, I don't have any taste or any desire to do, to abuse my body with with uh, you know if donuts and stuff I'm not going to eat them and it's not because I care because all of a sudden I don't care again and there's a grace that comes with it now um, John seventeen three and by the way does that make sense to you does that interpretation make sense do any of you right off the top of your head can you think of any recent dream or dream fragments and I encourage you that especially as you're learning and we're getting better at it we won't remember a lot of a dream but a fragment that sticks out to us will still have meaning so with the idea that after you know you begin to think about this some more go back and think about some dreams that you've had recently and try because you know what has been occupying your life okay and so it'll be easier to superimpose your setting into this also uh, the emotion part I've been frustrated I've been frustrated with the getting of the book uploaded right and I've been frustrated about my particular condition of dealing with it but I also know that there's some sickness and I forgot about the terrorist part there's also some sickness, and there's the devil attacks us different ways. And one of the things that the devil attacked me with is, you're always going to do this. You go up and down and up and down and up. And, why try? Why try? And that so I need to recognize that there is a terrorist attack involved in my physical body. That would be demonic. And he, uh, the attempts of the devil to influence me. He doesn't cause me to be sick, but he influences our thinking and the way, and the way we think about it. Any any comments or questions with that? Um, I was wondering though. I, I always have maybe two or three different time dreams. Mm -hmm. So, do you take in each, each one of them and look through them? Or yeah, if you can rem if you can remember all three of the dreams, mm -hmm. more often than not, they will all be saying the same thing in different language, and so sometimes what unlocks the interpretation of them is one of them you'll suddenly see a key uh, oh then as you start to apply that to the other fragments you go oh well that makes sense that's that's just the language that's being used in this dream i mean god can speak in lots and lots and lots of different kinds of pictures and stuff you know you know another thing that we assume a lot of times is that that we assume is also that that nightmares or something we consider a disturbing dream is automatically from the devil. No, it's not. Not necessarily. Because a lot of times once we interpret it, it's not a nightmare. It feels like a nightmare because it you just simply can't understand it. It seems crazy. Uh, one of the reasons that I mentioned again, uh, to, I'm going to mention now, I mentioned last week again, and you've probably heard before. Every one of us dream. It's not that you don't. It's scientifically proven. Every one of us dream probably at one and a half to two hours a night. We don't recall them. And one thing I didn't mention last week that I want to mention this week, there is the thing about consider it important enough. If you do things that says to your subconscious, to your soul, dreams are important to me, you'll actually start remembering them. 
One of the things you can do is put a pad in paper. That never worked real well for me. I just don't get far enough away. But the Lord reminded me of something. The scriptures say that the Holy Spirit calls all things to our remembrance. And so I intentionally pray that before I go to sleep. Lord, I'm going to dream tonight. And I'm asking you to help me even when I wake up, either to give me the motivation to jot down a, the a, a idea that will trigger my dream, my memory or my recall. But uh, so, but another thing here is I intentionally spent some money on my journal. That tells me that what I'm writing in my dream journal is important. It's not something I got at Walmart for a dollar. If Because I believe that what's contained in here is extremely valuable. And so by putting value in it, all of these things work together that cause your subconscious to be saying, this whole subject is very important to you. And so we're going to remember, you know, and then, then it was just simply, then you'd begin to apply simple pr principles uh, of dream interpretation that over time, everything's a process. Over time, everything grows. Now, uh, John 17, three says, this is eternal life. Because something I mentioned last week is, we're not learning tricks. Dream interpretation is not a trick. It's a communication tool. And it's got one of, God considers it, if not the most, one of the most important ways he has always and will always communicate with you personally. So it's up to you to break through the barrier of not understanding. And it's up to you to consider that it's important because he does it and so he uses it. Okay. But, uh, so it's not just, okay, we're learning how to be dream interpreters. Well, we're learning how to prophesy. Well, we're learning how to, you know, this, or we're learning how to do that. Uh, it's all about developing relationship with God. It says, this is eternal life. Or in other words, this is effective and vital existence that has no beginning and no end. That, that's what eternal means. This is real and truthful life, or that is ceaseless in existence. It never had a beginning. What's on the inside of you, the life that he is inviting you into, never had a beginning, and it will never have an end. This is the absolute fullness of life that is essential to love, peace, and joy. Okay, that's half the verse. So, so this is the purpose for giving you this kind and quality of life. He's got a purpose for it. And it says, so that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, his son. Or in other words, that you might have the intimate and never-ending experience of supernatural joy, peace, love, power, and overall wholeness and fullness that comes from God as the master and controlling factor of your life and equally have the same with me, said Jesus. See, we, there's so many verses in the Bible that we have just religiously glossed over and known and memorized for so long and we have no idea what is it at the richness that's behind all of that. And we haven't really, we're more religious than we think we are. We're still at the best of us probably in here, far more religious than you think you are. How do you know whether you're religious or not? Well, to the extent that the kingdom of God and his life and communication and companionship with God is not paramount to you. I didn't say doing church stuff. I said relationship with God and his kingdom as seeking, so important that you're pursuing it, seeking first the kingdom of God, which is him, which is Jesus, and his righteousness and so forth. It's so important that it supersedes everything that you consider important in this physical life. 
And that includes things that are not bad at all. It supersedes you being a mother and grandmother and all the activities involved. It supersedes you being a daughter and a co-worker and a student. It supersedes all. Those are not bad things. Those are good things. Our lives are made up of that. That's our natural life. But do you know that you will be the best student ever? You will be the best daughter ever. You will one day be the best wife ever. You will be the best mother and grandmother ever. If you are deeply and intimately connected with God as your primary primary source, because he will supernaturally show you how to do it rather than you figuring out, this is what I know it means to be this or that or the other thing. I already know that by natural knowledge. Well, what we already know by natural knowledge will only get us so far. But if we want to be supernatural, and we say we're a part of a naturally supernatural generation, but we live mostly considering that which is natural in our lives. And that, that is not a criticism. So much as it is a, hey, let, wait a minute. Now let's get real here. Because God's got so much more for us that is only accessible if we are connected to him. And the more we get connected to that, we go, this doesn't make me so heavenly minded. I'm no earthly good. This actually makes me earthly good. Far beyond what I've ever, I could have ever thought or dreamed. So therefore, that's, that's why we hone down on and learn how to really communicate with God and how to communicate on a, uh, instead of studying dreams and studying prophecy and studying all of these things, because in the first place, all of those things, those are elements of that supernatural world. But, and we learn the supernatural world so we can really get to know and experience God in all his fullness. So uh, prayer, or may say it this way, he states that the Holy Spirit, and it's earlier in that passage, he states that the Holy Spirit is your personal revealer. He's your personal revealer that makes all this stuff possible. When you're interpreting dreams, don't you ever try, dare try to understand it until you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Don't you dare go to a dream dictionary. Don't you dare go to somebody else that's going to help you understand what it means before you've gone to the Holy Spirit and let him lead you and give you revelation and practical help in pursuing how to understand his language to you at that moment. It is the Holy Spirit. He, you know, he is, it's probably the, one of the most unknown persons of the Trinity underutilized persons of the Trinity. Okay, just a couple more minutes. Um, <clears throat> prayer, now, because we're talking about prayer, <clears throat> prayer is the drawing room where it all happens. And as I began to realize some of these things, prayer became much and much more attractive to me. It became much more real to me. It was not a religious duty. I bet you... Most of us in here right now, no matter how much you believe in prayer, it's still a religious duty. It, it's going through the sieve of a religious, a religious duty because you're plugging it into what feels natural. But it's actually the drawing room. It's the boardroom of, of eternal life. It's the workshop. It's where everything is going to get done out here. The prayer room, the throne of grace, that's the workroom. That's the drawing board. That's where you work in your partnership with the Holy Spirit. That's the design table. That's the kitchen. That's where everything actually happens. And we're trying to make everything happen by what we know about in life and make everything fit into what we know about life rather than letting the Holy Spirit expand what's real as our Heavenly Father is our primary desire. Because as soon as this life is over, then eternity is just beginning. 
but he leaves us all here. It's our part of his purpose that we are here not only to enjoy him in this life, but also to not be limited by this life, but also help others find a companionship with him. It's a process. It takes time. 